Hi, I'm Jorn from Chatomize, and in this video, I will show you how we can use entities with dialogue flow. Entities are facts in a sentence that refer to the who, the what, the when, and the where. For example, an entity can refer to the topping of a pizza or the day of an appointment. And let's take this sentence as an example. I want to order a veggie pizza. If we would not use entities, dialogue flow would think that the user just wants a normal pizza instead of a veggie one. But gladly, we can train our dialogue flow agent to understand these types of facts called entities. Let's start by creating our own entity in dialogue flow. So in my last video, I already created a pizza bot with the intent order pizza in it. And this intent consists of simple training phrases such as may I have a pizza and can I order a pizza. But now we also want to understand pizzas with specific toppings on it. So first we need to go to entities and create our own topping entity. So we can just click on create entity and we will call it topping. So we will leave the defined synonyms to yes because this means that we can set different synonyms for the same type of toppings. And then we can determine the toppings by just filling them in. So we will just fill in cheese, we can fill in veggie, we can fill in pineapple, beef, sausage, and we will add a row for ham. And because we set the define synonyms to yes, we can set synonyms for the same type of topping. So for example, with veggie, we can also set a synonym called vegetarian. So when we are done, we can just click on save and this will save our entity. Then if we go back to our order pizza intent, then we can add new phrases that mention the specific topping. So we can say, I want a pizza with pineapple, pineapple and ham. Can I have a pizza? with bacon and cheese. I want two pizzas with beef and can I have three pizzas? And what you will automatically see is that Dialogflow recognizes that three is a number and also the same with two. So it will recognize that two is a number. And this is done by system entities. System entities are entities that are built in the system of Dialogflow. And that's why Dialogflow can automatically recognize things such as two and three, but it can also recognize, for example, your email or someone's age. So Dialogflow has some documentation on this. So I will add the link in the description to this documentation, but you can see that you can say something about the date time or the date or specific period. Uh, about numbers, but also about certain units such as the length or the speed. So with system entities, you can automatically recognize that kinds of entities. But we just created our own entity, the topping entity. So we also need to tell Dialogflow which part of the sentence relates to a specific entity. So what we can do is we can just annotate beef. So we can just select it and then you can just type in topping. And then it will understand that beef is a topping. And we will do the same with bacon. So we can just annotate bacon and then we can say topping. We can do the same with cheese. So again, topping. And we will do the same with pineapple and ham. So what Dialogflow automatically does, it will assign a different topping to ham and it will assign a different topping to cheese. And that's not something that we want because Dialogflow now thinks that bacon and cheese are a different kind of entity. So what you do is you just delete the ham part in this example and select it again and then say topping, topping. And then we'll understand that it is the same topping. So we'll do the same thing with cheese, so that won't be a topping topping. I will delete this, annotate it again, and say topping topping. And then it can understand that bacon and cheese are both two examples of the same topping. Then if we scroll down, you will automatically see 
that we have two parameters. We have the number, which relates to the number of pizzas that someone wants, and we have the topping. And the topping is also a list. This means that you can have multiple toppings in one specific sentence. And you need to make sure that the is list is checked. Otherwise, Dialogflow cannot handle multiple toppings in one sentence. And lastly, we can also use the values of the topping in our response. So we will just remove this response and we will say delicious a pizza with and then we can set a dollar sign and then we can just select topping. Then we will save this intent and Dialogflow will train the agent again on the new phrases that we provided here. So the training is now completed and then I can say, can I have a pizza with beef? And I will say, delicious, a pizza with beef. And can I order a pizza with pineapple and ham? And I will say, delicious, a pizza with pineapple and ham. But when I say, can I order a pizza? Then Dialogflow doesn't know a response. And this is because we didn't set a topping. So we need to make sure that a user fills in a certain topping. And we can do that by using slot filling. Slot filling basically means that the intent is only finished if certain parameters are filled in. And in this case, it's only the topping parameter. So you can set the topping to required, and this will automatically add the prompt. And the prompt really means that if the user didn't fill in a certain topping, we need to ask about that topping. So we can just click on define prompt, and then you can say, what toppings do you want on your pizza? They can close it again, and then we can hit save. Then we'll train the agent again. And then if you say, can I order a pizza? It will say, what toppings do you want on your pizza? So you need to tell the toppings before you can go further. So now I will say beef and sausage, and then it will say delicious, a pizza with beef and sausage. So that's how you handle entities in Dialogflow. If you want more videos on how you can use chatbots in your marketing, please subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't done this yet, also click the like button below.